Hello, this is Angela with Progress Permaculture. We are standing in the side yard of my Portland, Oregon permaculture garden. This is a little narrow strip of land between our house and our neighbor's driveway. But there is so much productivity here. And today I wanted to talk about a little happy accident in the side yard that emerged due to a lack of time that I had and the fact that I let a few garden chores go in the fall. And the happy accident that I'm uh, gonna talk about in just a second is a great illustration of stacking functions. It's a great illustration of how sometimes when we let nature do its thing, um, it knows better than we do and it can actually reduce our workload and create um, some better design on its own. In permaculture, we want to create effective designs to better enhance our quality of life, increase our food security, and heal our relationship with the planet. But it doesn't mean that we always know best. In fact, we want to look to designs in nature. We want to take examples of things that work really well and look at the patterns that we're seeing in nature when uh, on her own, nature creates abundance and sustains that abundance. And here, I have my Marion berry here. I know folks on some of my old videos about Marion berries have said, "What? how is that a Marion berry? They're very, very thorny. Your Marion berry shouldn't be very thorny. This is a variety called Willamette, I believe. Uh, if you have a very thorny Marion berry, it may be a seedling um, or it may be an older variety, but there's no reason that your Marion berries should be thor thorny. It was produced in Oregon and it is well suited to our climate. It produces these large berries. It's not quite ripe yet large berries that are ripe substantially earlier than my thornless triple crown blackberries or the invasive Himalaya Himalayan blackberries that a lot of folks go and forage. The Merriam berry has these very long kind of spindly canes and I have an old video where I talk about my training system. It's the same training system I use for my thornless blackberries in the front yard, but the canes for a Merriam berry, they can extend uh, far longer than you would anticipate. They can get really long. And last year I was very busy. I was dealing with a lot of caregiving obligations and my Marion berry didn't get strung up properly as it was growing. So I ended up with these long canes entwined in my Gumi berry. And I was really concerned that I would end up breaking or bending them um, and damaging them in a way that either they wouldn't produce well next year or expose them to disease in our rainy winter. So I just left them all entangled in this gumi berry. And what I found is that the gumi berry creates a wonderful natural trellis. In permaculture, a uh, guild design, where we're looking at the different layers in our companion planting in our food forest, we do talk about using those large canopy trees, those larger trees in our food forest as natural trellises for our vining plants, for our kiwis, for our berries, for our passion fruit, things like that. So that you aren't having to build a structure on which your vines ramble. Now there are ups and downs to that. That means that the fruit may be really high out of reach. That is a reason that I grow my kiwi berry on my shed so I can keep it down, controlled where I can pick it easily from the ground. But something like this gumi berry is working really well. It's a shrub that is supporting my Marion berry. And actually the, the berries, as you can see here, are all growing on the edge in very easy reach. It's kind of on its own grown in such a way that the blossoms are not tangled in the core of the gumi berry. They are actually out on the edge where the pollinators could reach them and where we got really good fruit set and where I can pick them easily. So for me, it means that all of my berries have kind of taken care of themselves and I can come along and I can pick them all when they're ripe. And I probably don't want to continue this for too many years without some level of maintenance. When you let the vines just ramble and do their thing, particularly when you're looking at cane fruit that have canes that will be spent and then die and eventually form like a bramble. And then you have the productive canes and then you have the uh, primo canes, which will fruit next year. You really want to do some maintenance to keep it kind of from becoming unkempt, but also easier to harvest the fruit. So for me, what I'm doing is I'm allowing all of these fruiting berries to uh, go ahead and do their thing tangled in the gumi berry. And then the new growth is going back along my trellis along the fence so that when I have new canes coming up, I'm gently making sure they are guided 
over to the fence for next year. So I'm, I'm restoring my process of my organizational system for the next year. But at the same time, I'm acknowledging that like, hey, nature did a good thing. I didn't actually have to do anything with my Marion berries last year. And when it got away from me and I was worried like this is gonna be a messy disaster, it's actually turned out really well. So maybe there are places in your food forest design where instead of building perhaps a wooden trellis or even a wire a wooden wire trellis that will deteriorate over the years, you could think about what about a natural living trellis? As the gumi berry gets taller and more mature, most of the berries are up higher. And so it's not actually obstructing any of the flowers and fruit of the gumi to have this Marion berry intertwined at this lower level. So what are the patterns that we can see happening in nature? How can we use what happens on its own when we don't interfere and take some design lessons from that. Are there places in our gardens where we would be better off to just let our vines ramble naturally and do their thing? Are there upsides? Are there downsides? Are there times at which we maybe should consider a higher level of maintenance, a higher level of our own involvement and intervention in order to have a more productive crop? And what does that mean when we weigh the productivity of the plant, the quantity of the harvest, against the amount of labor involved. Maybe a method like this produces a little bit less, and that is a criticism that folks lob against permaculture, like overall yields are less. Yes, but is your labor substantially less? I didn't spend hours in the garden last year stringing up my Marian berries. I did absolutely nothing, and I'm still going to get a large harvest for my freezer. So it's not just what is the yield, it's what is the labor required in order to produce that yield? And am I still gonna get a sufficient yield if I reduce my labor somewhat and use a different design strategy? So I hope this example of the Marion Berry here gave you all something to think about in your permaculture design, gave you room to realize that like, if you don't get to all your tasks, that's okay. Your garden is, can, is still gonna be able to take care of itself. You're not gonna pay some horrible price for having gotten behind on a chore. And it may turn into an educational opportunity may turn into a happy accident that teaches you some lessons about moving more toward more resilient design, about ways you can tweak your current design and craft something that reduces the labor for you and still has those yields that you need out of your garden. I'm going to get to picking not my Marion berries here, but the raspberries right down there and I will be back soon. Please check out not only my Patreon down below, but also YouTube has a new like little heart-shaped thanks button. Um, so a, a viewer pointed that out to me and I didn't know what it was, but uh, YouTube has decided to add that onto this channel. So check that out if you have time. I'll be back soon, bye.